Okay, welcome in. In this video, we're going to be doing some uh, financial analysis in R. Um, there's a, a couple of really cool packages that allow you to do a lot of cool stuff um, just on your own, you know, personal console. Uh, today, we're going to be combining that with uh, some Monte Carlo simulations, which um, are going to help us to determine kind of the riskiness or the downside of a specific portfolio. In this case, will be a stock. So we'll, we'll get to all of that. Um, to start, I'm going to clear this here. Um, we are going to want to load the kind of main library uh, that is used for uh, the quantitative or financial analysis in R, and that is this quant mod library. Um, so go ahead and load it if you don't already have it. At, already have it. Um, I've also loaded some familiar data table and ggplot libraries as well. Um, and then the big kind of canonical symbol in the quant mod library is this get symbols symbol or sorry, get symbols function, the canonical function, get symbols function, Ooh, long day. Um, so if I run this, it's going to run in my console and it's gonna seem like nothing happened, right? Like I ran get symbols, uh, Apple, AAPL, this is the ticker for uh, Apple, the, the phone, or I guess the technology company. Um, and it just spits out like this, you know, character, um, AAPL, and it doesn't really look like much happened. Um, but if we check our environment, um, you're gonna see that when we ran this, it loaded this, uh, XTS time series object called AAPL. And we can actually look at this uh, object. It's it's now stored in our environment. We can do uh, take the head of it, take the um, uh, head parentheses Apple to get kind of the first six rows. And really cool, you can see um, historical data on the stock. So going back to January 3rd, 2007, um, this is what the stock opened at, the high of the day. So it opened at, you know, $3.08. Plus some weird decimals, which you know we we don't really worry about when we're thinking about money. Um, pat, you know, past the second cent or the hundredth cent, um, the high for the day, the low for the day, what it closed at, and the volume traded. Um, and it's pretty crazy to think that in 2007 Apple was trading at at this. Although this might not account for like stock splits or stuff, but we're not going to get into that now. Um, and we can, you know, the nice thing about XTS objects is that it has really compatible plotting functionality with the R base. Um, function. So if I just do plot of AAPL, you know, dollar sign Apple open, I get this really awesome chart um, that goes back to 2007 and shows the closing price, or this is the opening price, but we could do the closing price um, for all the days of Apple since, you know, that time. Obviously, it's been on quite a tear, right? It started down at three and is now, you know, it's it's been down a bit recently, but it's it's still, you know, times 50 or whatever. Um, so it was a good investment if you could go back and, and do it again. So that's that's the simple like quant mod loading and looking at a, a kind of financial stock object. We're going to do um, a Monte Carlo simulation where we kind of assume in here. Let me clear your eyes. I'm going to fix something here um, where we're going to assume that um, I'm going to explain why I'm doing all these these adjustments later. We're going to assume that Apple is the only stock you hold in your portfolio, and you can generate more complicated portfolios where you have. Um, percentages of different stocks, 20% Apple, 30% bonds, 40% Google, whatever. Um, in this case, we're going to assume that we just have Apple and we're going to generate what I'm going to call uh, the a vector of Apple returns, which is going to be the closing uh, prices of Apple divided by the lag of the closing prices. So essentially what that is, is just, you know, today divided by uh, yesterday. And let's look at, um, let's look at the first value or the second value for that. And let's look at, uh, Head Apple two. Um, so we got this value of 1.02. And what that's saying is that from you know the first day to the second day, uh, the Apple close went up from 2.99 to 3.06 about, and that is a 2.2% increase. You get the 2.2% by looking after the one. So that's kind of our, our daily return for that. Um, the first value is in uh, our, our return uh, vector is going to be NA because there were no previous days. So I'm just going to assign uh, that to one. And I'm also going to make sure I'm going to uh, cast this as a numeric because otherwise it's going to give me weird issues. If I just run, you know, this code and then look at Apple return, it's going to be this weird time series. I don't want that. I'm just going to make it numeric. And now, um, now I'm, let me just print it out. Um, and now I just have this nice uh, numeric vector. Uh, and, okay. Anyway, so now we have like our portfolio return um, you know, again, we're assuming Apple's the only thing in our portfolio. We could have a more complicated portfolio. And now we're going to do an actual Monte Carlo simulation. And Monte Carlo simulations, like, 
I think they sound like really confusing and fancy and they're cool, but I don't know if they're necessarily fancy. You're basically doing something kind of, you're brute forcing something over and over using a computer to loop it a ton of times to kind of get an answer you're interested in. So in this situation, we're going to be doing some kind of uh, a risk analysis where we say, okay, um, maybe you're thinking about investing in Apple or like a similar portfolio in future. You have a history of returns and you want to do some downside analysis and see like, okay, What's the worst that could happen given that I, you know, have this portfolio? The way we're going to do that is we're going to simulate, let's say you hold this, you know, stock for a thousand days or like about two or three years. Um, what's like a potential really bad outcome if you hold that stock for the two or three years? Now, of course, we can't project into the future, right? If we could, you know, everything would be a lot easier. Um, but what we can do is we can use the historical data of the stock or the portfolio and kind of sample out, you know, sample a uh, thousand days at a time and construct that as our 1000 day period. And we can see how many of those, you know, are bad, like what a really bad one looks like. And that gives us, you know, even though we can't necessarily always use the past to predict the future, um, that, sorry, I got mixed up in my, my horizon, even though we can't always use the past to predict the future, um, that can help us say like, okay, even though Apple did well, you know, maybe in 30% of cases, it does pretty poorly. So that, that's kind of the overview of what's happening here. Hopefully it makes more sense when we actually step to the code. We're going to set the seed so we can replicate the randomness. We're going to set this to a thousand day window. Um, you can always do, you know, uh, there are 252 working days in a year. So you could do 252 times whatever, you know, times 10, if you want to do 10 years, let's do um, 10,000 or, or 1,000. And then we're going to do, this is kind of our critical piece of code. Um, each Monte Carlo simulation, we're going to sample out of the return vector, Apple return, we're going to sample n days, which is a thousand. We're going to sample a thousand days, and we're going to do replace equals true. I just set this equal to be true, which is saying we're sampling with replacement. We can get a, the same day multiple times. Um, you know, that's that's good if you want to kind of see like some crazy tail events. You can also do false if you don't want. Uh, you can set this to false if you don't want to get the same day over and over. Um, but I, I just set that equal to true. And so if I did that, you know, if I ran this code once, it would give me. Uh, why is it giving me that? Apple, let me make sure. One second. Technical difficulties. Um, yeah, so that should be fine. Yeah, let's see what the you're, you're you're lucky. You're seeing some live debugging here. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's just printing two. Yeah, it's printing two columns at once. Um, you can see this goes from like 991 to 993. Um, because whatever. So th this is basically, you know, one day of Apple return, another day of Apple return, another day of Apple return, and it's, it's giving me a thousand of them. And you can see like this day, it was slightly positive. This day went up a bunch. You know, this is 3.8%. This day it was down almost a percent, et cetera, et cetera. We want to do that a hundred times. So we want to get a hundred different 1000 day samples of Apple. So a hundred times a thousand. Seems like it's a lot of code and a lot of stuff to run, but the nice thing about the replicate function is boom, it's done immediately. Um, and if I look at this paths thing, this is annoying because uh, we can't really see because there's so many sig figs. So I'm gonna just add this like round thing. And now, yeah, everything's rounded too, so it's nice. So um, I'm just gonna look at the first like 10 columns. Now you can see path is this, is this object where there are a thousand rows. Each column is like a, uh, uh, a 1,000 day sample or 1,000, yeah, 1,000 day uh, kind of period. And each column is a different, um, each column is a different uh, iteration. So we have a hundred columns. I'm just going to show this so it's clearer. We have a hundred different columns and a thousand rows. And like, if I look at paths, if I look at like the fifth column, that's a thousand days of Apple return. So that's like a trial, right? What we want to do is we want to take, these are all daily returns. We want to take the like total return. So we want to do the, uh, this is the cumulative product of that. So multiplying it together, like if we're compounding and holding the stock over time, we use the apply function where we're applying the cumulative uh, product function over the columns. That's what this two is. I would do one if I wanted rows, but I want it over the columns. And uh, when I run that, I get, um, let's look at uh, head of paths, the first five columns. And now I get this nice um, result where like each column is saying, uh, if you hold, it's, it's a different trial where if you hold Apple, and what your compounded kind of returns are. Um, so like if I looked at paths uh, one, you know, this is saying, you know, it goes up by quite a lot. If I if I hold it and it goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, and it ends at, you know, this this huge number, 11X, your original um, portfolio. So now we have a hundred different trials, right? That That's great. 
Um, I'm going to form this into a data table because data tables are, are nice to play with and, and graph. I'm going to add a um, just an index for days, which is just you know days one through a thousand. And then I'm going to do what you know we're going to be using ggplot. Ggplot really likes long data instead of wide data, so I'm going to melt paths around uh, days, and that's this id variable, id variable, or id bars, or whatever. Um, we're melting it around days, and now it's kind of nice to look at where we have in the first column the days, in the second column the variable, which is the trials. So this is basically saying like version one, trial one, um, and then the third column is the cumulative return on that day. So on day five of trial one, the cumulative return was you know about negative two percent, like it's it's down you know ninety eight percent of what it was, um, and then uh, you know on the final trial, on the hundredth trial. Uh, on the last day, a thousandth day, we, you know, the portfolio was 6x. And you can see this number is 10,000 just because I have a thousand uh, days times 100 trials is, um, you know, 10,000. That's, that's 10,000. There are five zeros uh, there. Okay. So this is really nice for ggplot because now we can pass these values specifically into ggplot. We can say um, x equals days. We want our days on the x axis. Um, why uh, we're going to plot the value. I'm just doing a little bit of conversion to get it to a percentage, so it's nicer to look at, but it's just minus one times 100. Um, and then we want to color it. We want the different lines by trials, so you know by this, this variable. Um, I'm going to make uh, lines. Uh, it align, and we're going to see in a second. The one thing that I caution you is when you have like a ton of different variables, you want to make sure you have this theme legend dot position equals none. Otherwise, there's going to be a legend that has a color for each of the hundred variables, and it's going to take a long time to run. It's going to be ugly when you get it. So just make sure, sure that's in there. I'm going to run this. It says invalid graphic state because my window is too small. Apparently it's still too small. So let's try that. Okay. I'm going to do plot new and I'm going to do dev off, which is a good way to reset it. And uh, there we go. Yes. So now awesome. We see all these different trials, each line is a different trial where we like held Apple. Um, and you can see they all started at zero and they all kind of went their different way. Most of them looks like are positive. Here's zero, there's not a lot below zero. There's this one where you get like 15, you know, thousand percent return, which is crazy, way more than, than actually than Apple actually did. And we can do like very simple summary statistics on this. So we can see what the, um, you know, value was in the thousandth day. Um, this is the summary of the percent return of the thousandth day. On median, you're up 184%, and um, the worst possible case was down 43%. This all, and, and then I, we can look at um, uh, we can look at how many actually finished negative, uh, which is which is just six percent finished negative. So the results are good, and this all makes sense because if we look at Apple, Apple is up a ton over this period. So if we're pulling out like a random thousand days from these, even though like it's random and we might be pulling some bad days. Most of these are good, so it's going to be very hard to get like a bad day. So you're 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 probably like, okay, this is kind of a silly exercise. Like, obviously, Apple is a good bet. Apple is nice to look at it first. Let us go and find and replace all mentions of AAPL with GE, which is the stock for General Electric. So I'm just going to hit all and um, what? Why, why isn't this replacing? Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I don't know why it's replacing all, but I'll just say, we'll just click this. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Sorry. Usually that works. I don't know what's going on. Um, so I just found and replaced all the AAPLs with GE. And now um, I'm going to run the same thing. And here's the plot for the GE stock. And you can see it's, it's you know, it's down over this period, um, quite, quite down. And if I do kind of the same work where I run the same Monte Carlo simulation, run the same plot, you're going to see there are certainly, you know, trials where we return above zero, but a lot of them are below zero. And if we look at the summary of the performance on the last day, um, it's pretty right skewed. Like there, are, there is a day where we get, you know, 183% return. There is a trial where we get 183% return. But on average and on median, that, that return is negative. Specifically, you're down 27%. And 63% of the trials are, are going to be negative. So, you know, this could be a case if, if let's you know if we want to do like even a little bit more advanced um let's do uh here let me do this where i like replace this is totally on the fly so sorry if it's awkward that's not stock price i'm going to replace ge with apple boom 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 
and then I'm going to say, um, I'm just going to call. So, okay. So I'm defining GE and Apple return, and then I'm going to take the average of them. So imagine portfolio is 50, 50 in each one. So just uh, RET equals GE RET plus uh, GE RET plus Apple RET divided by two. So just the average. And then I'm going to replace RET in here. And that should work. So that's RET. Run this. Um, and now we can see a portfolio of Apple plus GE. And, you know, here it's a little bit more nuanced, right? On average, this portfolio does quite well. It's up 84%. The median's lower, 57%. But there are some there are some pretty bad cases, right? Where you're down 62% and 24% of the cases you actually end negative. So this would be an interesting risk analysis where someone comes to you and is like, hey, look, you should take this portfolio in the past. You know, it's had great return in a thousand days, up 84%, median 57%. You say, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know those are great, but there are some really bad cases. And actually a quarter of the time, this ends negative. So anyways, I know it's a little bit of a long video, hopefully uh, something new and interesting when you're kind of thinking of analyzing your own stuff and hopefully useful to learn more about quant mod and uh, Monte Carlo simulation. So talk to you next time.